this next piece is to help soothe and calm the mind and really ground it into your conscious recognition that there is not a choice with regards to how we are programmed to perceive, to see, to validate what's going on around us. And to just sink back into that knowing that we have everything that we need within our bodies, within our truth, within our home, our magnetic monopole, you know, this beautiful, precious gift, this one body that we have in this life, that we don't have to do anything, that we can just relax into our body and the vehicle knows exactly what to do. We're doing more of the educational piece. And the reason for that is we're shifting into conscious personality education. What we're talking about with human design, we know is that life is about decision making. It's an incredible truth, very simple, simple, not easy. Now, seeing is for our mind. Seeing is everything when it comes to our experience of mind, how it lays a foundation for the way in which our mind is going to develop and think about conceptual reality. So we're moving into the conscious variables and the transformation that can occur. Now, I'm going to read something from Ra with regards to a quote from the external color book. He says, oh, outer authority is an extraordinary thing. It's what you get from me. And what you notice is that it's interesting, don't you? This is what outer authority is. It's not whether you agree or not, like it or not, whatever the case may be. I know that there are many, many expressions of outer authority that I will not necessarily agree with, but it doesn't mean that I will not respect it. It doesn't mean that I won't be interested. It just means that somebody else's unique outer authority isn't necessarily something I can grasp, but it will still be interesting. And it doesn't mean that the person who grasps it is ruled by it because we are beings who operate out of our inner authority, not based on somebody else's authority over us. This is a whole new kind of communication. It's a communication that is there to expand the consciousness field. We are in dire need of the expression of outer authority. We are in dire need of it. We really are, unquote. And that outer authority is part of what I want to develop in you as a conscious personality witnessing you for you, if you're a generator, you for others, if you're a projector, you as your impact, if you're a manifester, you, of course, in your surprise, in connection with the totality, if you're a reflector. So our nodes represent the foundation for understanding everything about the nature of life, says Ra. This is about the bedrock of what it is to be conscious and aware. Now, the independent variable is something that has emerged out of the development of both primary health system. And now we're moving into rave psychology. So rave psychology is a lot more complex. For me, it's personally very interesting so that we can really grasp this because I feel like it's a really important thing. It's where I have a lot of energy and compassion and care, not only for you as an individual on the other side of this call, but also for all of humanity and what a difference it made in my life that I hope and pray that it'll you know, get across to those who can hear me and that I can reach. Inside human design is successful because it can heal the vehicle, the body. It can change and transform your life. And we know that it does that through strategy and authority, what that brings. So that's always our bedrock because we know that there's a possibility and a potential of what the primary health system dietary regimen, as Raw calls it, what it brings. You might have already experienced that in the months that we've been together. So to be able to work with the vehicle, the body is enormously successful. It really helps align the vehicle. Now, when we get to the mind part, that's something totally different. Mind is a little bit more challenging. I could say a lot more challenging in some cases. So when we come to the area of our mind, Ross says there's nothing more difficult to heal than a not self mind because in fact, it can't be healed. It can be torn down brick by brick, broken down, cracked, you know, shattered, and then reassembled as something else. So in order for that to happen, a mutation has to take place. 
for it to be possible, the foundation of your strategy and authority has to be established. So one of the reasons why I spent so much time and slowly, you know, stepped us through working with the body over time and even added in dream rave weak point is to give us time to marinate in the unconscious design process to give us time. Because as we move into the personality side, what's going to happen is your mind is going to kick it up a notch as far as how it thinks it can manipulate, control, distort. Oh, I know this, so I should do that. And that's exactly where I don't want you to go. I don't want you to take this and try to strategize with it, particularly those of you who are you know, right-minded, right-brained, quad-right, anybody who's right, just sit with this, take it in, process, you know, absorb be receptive to, and don't try to do anything with the information. Okay. Just watch, just witness. We're helping you get in touch with the passenger consciousness. So again, to illustrate the point, here's the independent variable on conscious and personality sides and the dependent variable sun and earth are dependent on the nodes because without nodes, we don't have a movie. We don't have a witnessing. We don't have a watching. We don't have a path. It's like, Here's the fish, sun, earth, and here's the water it swims in. If you take the fish out of water, it's dead. Okay, so we have to process sun, earths in context with nodes always. They are not de it depend independent of each other. The sun, earth is dependent on the nodes, dependent on the path. And the nodal alignment and the nodal perspective are critical to understanding what you are in context with life. The stellar background field that is there has been imprinted through these two points in space, everything pointed through these two points in space. So in order for us to take full advantage of what our cognitive potential happens to be, so whatever it is for you, I'm feeling, in order for my feeling to be grasped, I have to be correct in my nodal alignment. So this is a very, very special place right here, right now, where we're diving into, in that we're going into rave psychology. It's my favorite thing about human design. It's all about the seeing. These nodes are magical. These nodes are critical to understanding how our design, our unconscious, and our personality, our conscious, are bound together through the nodes. Okay. We're going to show you the one place that your body and your life are glued. Okay. Where they're glued together. And that happens to be these nodes, these link nodes, very specific nodes of the moon. They're called link nodes. Link nodes are an incredible thing. They're actually literally linked to each other. They're linked. And that's the one place that we are connected. Mind to body, to create spirit. So this, in essence, is the way that the monopole, the magnetic monopole sitting here at gate two, holds us together in an illusion of being separate from the greater all that isness, the greater totality. It gives us our body, our body being the life. It gives us this life, this one precious life that we have. So nodes are the agents or the mechanical structure of how the monopole holds us together. This monopole has two functions, and this is about holding us together and also pulling us along a path or a trajectory in space. Okay, so this G center, G for geometry, I like to say, even though the voice didn't say that, Ra didn't say that, it's just because it's a beautiful symmetry. If you look at the cross of the Sphinx and cross of the vessel of love, it makes a perfect symmetry within the rave mandala wheel. It pulls everything together. So the design itself, if you just to split it off apart, remember the unconscious design is so different. It's a completely different thing than the conscious personality. They're very, very, very different. The crystals work differently. They don't have a natural relationship to each other. They may not even like each other very much, but they're bound, helpless, choiceless to each other. And they're bound through these nodes, the nodes of the moon that hold them together in the illusion of this separateness from totality. 
They are the agents of the monopole, the nodes themselves, the function of how this monopole works. So what do we know about the monopole? We know that it, its other function is direction. Remember, love and direction. Alignment to our direction is the responsibility of the monopole. Yet the language of the nodes is about direction. That's the road in life. That's the environment in life. And that's the way that we see everything where we be. So that road is where we could be, see, interpret, experience, transform, mutate, and express our outer authority. The whole movie is the nodes where we take our place and space within life and its totality. So if you see, if you're looking, if you're breathing, if you're watching, and you're not seeing what's correct for you, you're not seeing what you're designed to see, you're not seeing what you're good at seeing, you're not seeing what your mind needs to be able to see in order to operate at its full potential, then you're blind. You don't see it all. And your mind is busy working on the wrong things. The mind misses out on the most incredible possibilities of inspiration, your epiphanies, your realizations, your recognitions, your inspirations that move you. And you cannot see those things if you're seeing incorrectly. So being ready to engage with life requires that we're seeing in alignment. And that's why this is so important, precious, and valuable to me to get across to you. Why I'm explaining the mechanics rather than just saying, this is how you see. We have to see why it's so important to attune to what we're seeing in alignment. Okay, so an interesting thing about nodal perspective and design external is that we're looking at the ability for you to walk your path through Saturn, through Uranus, through Chiron, and that it's not really important until you've reached Saturn return. So if you're younger than 30, don't worry, this is going to continue to develop. Okay, it's not really important until Saturn, just like we were talking about with the nodes unconscious the environment not as important. Now, of course, remember, if you're under 30, you've got children who are under 30, obviously, they're still children if they're under 30. They're living at home, they're sick, or you're watching them and they're sick. Get them to their correct environment and see if that does make a difference for health situations. But in the reality, these nodes are developmental stages that get to the beginnings of maturity at Saturn. Okay, maturity process, fulling maturity, moving towards the North Node at Uranus and the stage upon which the life is set through Chiron and beyond is firmly on the other side in the North Nodes. Karmically, the South Nodes are some place where you have been developing over lifetimes or overdeveloped. Okay, and what you're moving towards the whole point of this movie in this life is what is the North Nodes what you're moving towards, Rahu, or I'll call them Rahu in alignment with the um, Vedic traditions, head of the dragon. This is the tail of the dragon down here with regards to how they work. K2, south node, is karmic, linked karmically through past lives. Rahu, north node, is what you're moving towards in this life, what you're here to develop in this life. So it's a really important concept to grasp that although they do operate over the entirety of the life, there is a focus and a shifting that happens at Uranus at your midlife. Now, everything in human design, especially if you're a projector, projectors, this is our whole point of our movie. It's just seeing. It's not doing. Manifestors, generators, you get to do. You get to initiate. You get to act in a consistent, regular basis. Projectors, it's not about that. It's about the seeing, 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 witnessing. Well, that's true for all of us to some degree. There are levels of seeing that we as human beings cannot partake in when we're blind. When we're blind, as in when we're distracted. Remember that word distracted because there's a veil over your eyes where you cannot see if you are distracted. When you are distracted, you are distracted when you are using your mind to make a decision. You don't know how to see what you're here to see if you're not equipped cognitively. 
I find it so funny that I keep rhyming unintentionally. Dang it, did it again. <laughs> it's seeing, 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 witnessing, okay? The view is like a frame. It's a framework for your mind. So here's all these different windows, these views. And one of the ways you can look at your view is like that window, okay? It's a window, you're driving down the highway, and this window out this side is your correct view. But when you're looking out the other side, it's not the correct view. Now, this is not about controlling the view, but just like how you frame a pictures, a picture itself or a window, there's many ways of seeing the things inside it. If you frame the picture differently, if you use a different frame, you're seeing a different way of perceiving the view. It could be dirty. It could be stained. It could be a glass window where you can't see anything out the other side. Okay. I like that analogy of the glass window, glass stained glass window. If you're looking through your view and you're distracted, there's a stained glass window over what you're designed to see that is distracting you away from what you're supposed to see. So you can't see it because now you're looking at the picture of the stained glass window. And framing that view is based on an inherent perspective of you watching you, you as a pattern, watching the pattern within the pattern of reality. Because we all we are just patterns and cycles of experience. So thinking about this again, there's no point in trying to understand our view until we can grasp what that exalted state of outer authority is like. So outer authority as a concept, Ra calls it the true expression of the passenger. Technically, when we look at view, we're looking at a sum totality of everything within the design framed through those two points in space where we have a linking between design and personality, your specific outer authority, your exalted expression of what you're here to offer as a unique individual to others, your awakening. Ra calls it the nine-centered enlightenment, outer authority being the true expression of the passenger coming out through your, through your frame. So the role of you as a passenger is filtering the consciousness field. We filter everything. See, we're all we are are filtering agents. Everything here gets filtered through those nodes. And as we're working with life to be exactly what life asks for, needs, no more, no less, we communicate with others when we're working without an agenda from mind. So recognized, invited with this design, emotionally clear, not trying to get something from someone, but moving from my own personal space, with, which for me is my personal perspective, okay? So if we're working without an agenda, without a purpose, simply expressing our nature to communicate, and when we communicate correctly, outer authority is the pure expression of passenger consciousness that is unique and rooted in the complexities and the specificities of our own individual design. It's really what I'm so passionate about because it really is like my truest joy is to see this work, you know, psychologically. How does it work? How can it work? And what do you see? I would love to see what you see when we get through the end of this. You know, that's why I have a year with you guys. <laughs> I want to I want to have you on this journey and, and witness your own outer authority, the highest states of consciousness, because it's there. We can get glimpses of it. We can see it. We can experience it. The longer that we're in this, the more unique it becomes. The less we get our mind out of our trip and the less we try to get to grasp and greedy from the I, 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 I plane. I have to, must, should. I have to ensure my survival. You know, that whole thing. That whole trip. That's a seven centered concept. If we can get rid of operating from there, we clean off our windows of our view, we remove the stained glass and we can see clearly. That's when we have the potential. Here, I'm going to read something for you from Ra. He says, for me, outer authority is the highest state of consciousness that's possible to be achieved within a bio form. There is no higher state of consciousness. There is only the potential of unique variations of that level of consciousness. It is far beyond what is called awakening or enlightenment. For me, enlightenment anyway, is a seven-centered concept. 
So our exalted expression of being is outer authority. This is what it is for me. Now, I came across this way long ago in Facebook when I first started exploring human design and seeing what people would post. And this is a little meme, a little guy saying, hey, what the hell is that? Oh, just my mind. And I really identified with that tangled mess of a web of the mind, just blah, blah. So instead of that outer authority, just trying to force what you see down other people's throats without correct aligned interaction. Yeah. Whatever it is for you, your strategy and your authority <laughs> trying to get this upon. But I've got all this stuff and it's important because I'm seeing it and thinking about it. Let me tell you all my stuff. No, it's not about that. It is about something so profoundly important to understand, Ross says, about outer authority. We are here to express outer authority. We're not here to lie by using our power to communicate in order to try and control our destiny and our future. And I can tell you the biggest thing that has shifted within my conceptual framework of what I think of as myself is that I don't see myself scheming or lying to control the other person to get what I think I want from them. That is the biggest shift. So when you make that shift, now some of us maybe are inherently programmed to lie more than others. For some of us, lying might be an art form, gate four, line four, you know, the fourth line, censoring things. That might be correct for you. But with regards to relieving the passenger of its delusion and egoistic nature of thinking that it can control and that it knows better than the body, that's the thing we want to get away from. The takeaway that I want you to come away from this particular session with me is about your external genetic predisposition to your correct perspective and how the world is perceived. Now, tone, when we get to tone, the tonal nature is that it forces on this side, on the conscious personality side, it forces you as a witness passenger consciousness to go through this back and forth of this and that. Okay, so it forces us to go through a binary, left to right, right to left. And Ra was thinking that maybe this is why it, it has to be that way because we're in a duality. So it's not about not being distracted. We can't not be distracted. It happens. So don't feel bad. Don't kick yourself. Don't, you know, self-recriminate or judge if you get distracted. It's part of what gives you a perceptual framing. Because if you see this, then it contrasts with that, this and that, this and that. So we're going to move back and forth and it helps us integrate to the duality. We, we perceive through a dualistic spectrum because we are a dualistic creature. We have a this and a that always black and white, up and down, left and right. You know, there's always a this and that. So it helps us compare and contrast. Now, this Maya it's all mind, Maya as in illusion, as in what you see inside of your head, what you see out in the world even is colored by the framing of your view, which is creating your Maya. If you put 12 people at the corner of a stoplight and they all see a horrific accident, they're all at different places from as far as their conceptual view. You know, they're not occupying the same place. So one might be over here, one may be over there. They're all seeing things differently because they're occupied, you know, wherever they're at with doing something. Somebody might have been texting on their phone while they're walking, while they're driving, while they're sitting at the stoplight. Somebody else might be talking. Somebody else might be biking. So, you know, we're all going to see things differently. And that is correct. So neither one of these values have a superior this or that. There's no good, bad, right, wrong. Okay. No, don't judge. Oh, that one's more evolved. I want that one instead. This is about you seeing for you. So the importance of seeing correctly is that all of us have these vehicles that align us. Our whole visual process helps us enhance the possibility of the expression of this outer authority. So we're driving down the highway. We're looking out the windows. Our outer authority in alignment is looking out the right passenger window, not as in right or left, but the correct one for you. Okay. It's not about whether our eyes see, so we could be blind and this still works, but it's about seeing when you're you, when you're you, when you're you, when you're you, when you're aligned to you, when you resonate with you, when you're surrendered to strategy and authority radically, 
if you're not, there's nowhere to go, nothing to be, nothing to do, but see the distortion. When your mind does not have the demand or control of decision making, it then can begin to notice. You need to be able to notice these things, but your mind isn't going to have a chance if you're trying to see what you think you should see. And that's the thing that the mind thinks it has to do. The reality is that the design node puts enormous pressure, okay, design node, north node, puts enormous pressure on the personality node, south node, here's the link nodes, to see correctly. The persona, the mind itself that was built over decades, eons, <laughs> and then decades in this life, the only way to heal it, the persona, maybe not the mind, the mind, we got to tear down, break it up and rebuild it. But the persona, the personality, it has to be healed through our own personal individual truth. It cannot be my truth. It cannot be Ra's truth. It cannot be your dog's truth or your husband or whoever tells you what to do's truth. It has to be your own self-revelation, which is why I'm taking you through this in this way, to, to dive deep into the experiment with you so that the experiments in its results are your own inherent truth and nobody else can argue with because it's your process. It's not about anybody agreeing with you. It's not about anybody trying to argue with you. No, it's not that. It's this. Okay. It's you for you. You're supposed to be looking at something. Okay. And it just something other than what you're supposed to be looking at distracts you. So you turn your head. You miss what you're supposed to be seeing out the window. Remember, we're a passenger riding around in the back seat. We're not driving, but something distracts you. So you turn and you're seeing something you're missing the thing that you were supposed to be looking at. So in the very moment you turn your head, the thing that you were supposed to see that you could have seen isn't really there anymore because you've been distracted because something else has caught your eye. So the attunement that you have to the distraction is stronger at the beginning of your deconditioning process. Everything about the frame of your view is trying to see the stained glass window rather than what's beyond it. And I'm using the stained glass window as a distraction. Okay. So Ross says, there is something else that changes the whole way in which you begin to process concepts. When you're looking at the distraction, it helps you to see something that you're not here to see. And then the way that you, your mind works is distorted. So this is the whole point. The way that the mind grasps concepts is framed through your view. Okay. Your nodes are the foundation of your view. They're much more the foundation of existence, Ross says, than anything else you've studied so far. It's the thing that makes the most incredible. Here's the movement, north and south nodes. Life is in the movement. Without movement, we have no life. Without the view, we don't have anything to watch. We have no life. It's a foundation of your life. Ra would call it the cross of life. Okay, we have our incarnation cross, and that incarnation cross is framed through the cross of life. So your nodes are the foundation of your view. Witness and watch and see. So remember that when the mind is no longer the decision maker, mind is then able to express itself cleanly without devious plans, reasoning, hope that it's going to get this or that or the other. No, it's about the pure expression of the genuine capacity of this personality, you, your conscious personality that you think you are, to filter what is around you and to express it. So the whole trip, the framework of your view is what is going to help you awaken. This view is making it possible for us to awaken. That's why it's so important for us to witness and watch. It's the most essential ingredient for you as a passenger. This is us sitting on the back seat, looking to the right place that is correct for us naturally, not forced, not pushed, but naturally getting distracted, recognizing the distraction and coming back home to the correct view. Okay. So not trying to force or push, but seeing it's the whole point about why I'm drilling this home repeatedly. What you're seeing is more important than the way that you conceptualize it. What you see is everything. It's exactly what you're here for, no matter the type what you're seeing, witnessing, 
watching, observing. This is the movie of your life. So to see correctly, significantly, it is really obvious when you're distracted, really obvious. It's so obvious that the distraction brings you something different when you're watching it, that you won't miss it ever again. Once you grasp it, once you really grok it, now it might take some time. It really might take some time to grasp the view. But once you grasp it, once you really see the consequences of being distracted and then following the white rabbit down the hill <laughs> and going on that adventure that maybe isn't necessarily correct for you, when you see that, when you witness and watch it, it makes a difference in your consciousness. It gives you so much more awareness. It's taking the veil off your eyes, the shroud over the conscious personality, the not self. So the thing for us understand to understand is that we are not here to always be in distraction, but the not self is. The not self is always in distraction. And that's Ra's words. He's very clear about that. Always in distraction. Always in transference, which is the word we'll use when we get to the mind, and distracted when we talk about where we are in space, not self, is distracted. The only solution we have is to educate you as a personality construct, which is why I'm doing this with you right now, to educate you in this duality, 